In this video, I'll introduce the probabilistic CKY algorithm. I'll provide the intuition behind the algorithm and then walk through a case example to see how it works in action. When working with probabilistic context-free grammars, we can use the probabilities of different parse trees to disambiguate between possible syntactic parses. However, how do we actually compute the probabilities of our parse trees? A simple approach is to extend the classic parsing algorithms we already have, and the most popular way of doing so is through probabilistic CKY. Probabilistic CKY is very similar to the classic CKY algorithm we've already discussed. It still assumes that it's working with a grammar that's in Chomsky normal form, and it still works by systematically computing values along the diagonals in the upper triangular portion of a matrix. Where it differs is that it considers an additional dimension corresponding to the probabilities of different constituents occurring. Formally, we can say that our input is of length n, where n is the number of words in the input. We can let v be the number of non-terminals in our grammar, so there could be a maximum of v probability values in a cell in the third dimension of our matrix. A cell at i, j, a corresponds to the probability of constituent a spanning positions i through j of the input. We can walk through a case example to see how this works. Let's say we have an input, the price includes a face mask, so a pandemic version of the example we have in the textbook. We have our small set of production rules already in Chomsky normal form, plus their probabilities of occurring, and then we have our matrix where we're focusing on the upper triangular portion. We'll start off just like with classic CKY in the upper left hand corner, so we're looking for a production rule that matches the single word the. We find one, and now the catch is that not only do we fill the cell with the name of the matching constituent, we also include the corresponding probability. We do the same thing with price, includes, a, and face mask, and now we've filled out all of our one-word constituents, so we can move on to the two-word constituents. First, we'll check the phrase, the price, so we're looking for a production rule that would match a determiner followed by a noun. We find that the noun phrase is a match, so to compute the probability for this cell, we'll take the probability of a noun phrase occurring and multiply it by the probability of a determiner occurring and the probability of a noun occurring, since those were the two constituents on the right-hand side. That'll give us a probability of 0.0012. Next, we'll check the constituent price includes. So we'll be looking for a production rule that matches a noun followed by a verb. We don't find any matches, so we'll move on and check includes a, so we're looking for a verb followed by a determiner. Again, we don't find any matches. We have just one two-word constituent remaining, so we'll check for a face mask, so the determiner followed by a noun. Just like earlier, we find a match here, so we'll go ahead and multiply the probability of a noun phrase by the probabilities of its individual constituents occurring. Now we can move on to three-word constituents. We'll start out with the price includes, the first possibility would be impossible given what we've computed so far, but the second thing we could check for would be a noun phrase followed by a verb. There aren't any production rules that match that though, so we can't fill this spot. Next, we'll be checking price includes a. We can't do anything with this, and we can't do anything with this, so we can't fill this cell with any constituents either. We'll move on to the last three word constituent, includes a face mask. For the first thing we check for, a verb followed by a noun phrase, we do indeed find a match. So we go ahead and compute a probability of 0.000024. Now it's conceivable that there could be a second match too. We check our other option, but it turns out that this one would be impossible to match. So we just have the verb phrase in this cell. Next we'll move on to forward constituents. So we'll start by checking for the price includes a. This option would be impossible, so with this one, and so with this one. So no hits there. We'll check the other forward constituent, price includes a face mask. First, we'll see if a noun followed by a verb phrase is a match. It doesn't look like it is. This option would be impossible, and so with this one. So we can't fill this spot either. At long last, we'll try to find a production rule that matches the entire input. Our first option is impossible, but it looks like our second option, a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase, is a match. 
So we'll go ahead and add that probability to our matrix. We'll still proceed with checking our other options too, in case there's another valid parse. Nothing here, and nothing here. So we end up with a single parse produced for this input with a probability of 2.304 times 10 raised to the negative eighth power. So we just successfully walked through an example of probabilistic CKY parsing. You might be wondering where those initial probabilities associated with production rules came from, and the answer is quite often a corpus. We can just check the number of times a certain production occurs in a corpus and divide that by the number of times the left-hand side of that production rule occurs overall and end up with a probability very similar to what we previously did when computing n-gram probabilities. If we don't have a labeled corpus available, we can also apply an algorithm called the inside-out algorithm. The inside-out algorithm is a generalization of the forward-backward algorithm that we saw with HMMs and allows us to iteratively improve probabilities over time. Overall, probabilistic CKY is a simple extension upon the classic CKY algorithm we already discussed, and it forms the basis of most modern statistical parsers.